Now, with the groundbreaking discoveries of the frescoes that adorned the walls of elite residences preserved under the volcanic ash that destroyed the island of Thera in the mid-second millennium BC, one perhaps from the house of a ship's captain showing a flotilla with one ship under full sail, and fresco paintings in Minoan Cretan style and technique found in royal palaces at Tel El Daba in the Nile Delta, at Katna in Syria, and at other sites in the Levant and Western Anatolia, our picture of such exchange has truly been transformed. An extraordinary openness to foreign imagery, even for royal depictions at, at the time of transition between the Middle and New Kingdom, is manifest on spectacular ceremonial weapons, one from Saqqara with a lively scene of a hero sparing a lion in a confrontation unexpected in Egyptian art of the time where the lion symbolized the pharaoh. Another is an axe blade inscribed with the name of the king Ahotep, founder of the Egyptian New Kingdom, and under the inscription, beloved of the war god Mantu, we see a griffin, not the falcon-headed pharaonic creature expected from Egypt, but rather a griffin in the style of Minoan Crete. And I must give special thanks to our installers. These are the pieces that came late on Sunday night. We were there until 12.30 in the morning installing these pieces so we could be ready for the press. There can be no doubt regarding the great prestige attached to such exotic images and also exotic materials and works, a view reinforced by wall paintings such as one found in the tomb of an Egyptian official named Rekmire, showing foreigners bringing such items to the Egyptian court. And thanks to the skill and patience of Bruce White, uh, we got an amazing photograph of the entire wall in this narrow chamber. You can see him up on a table that we had to rent from a local cafe. And um, we had the most inventive setup imaginable thanks to the local electrician that showed up. And he's pictured here very proud of himself. It's now displayed on the wall of the last gallery of the show. This appreciation of exotica is also reflected in the texts, particularly a cache of correspondence found at Akhenaten's capital, Amarna, in Middle Egypt, which reveals a sort of brotherhood of great kings from Hittite Anatolia, modern central Turkey, Mitanni in Assyria and modern northern Iraq, to, e to Egypt and involving smaller states in the Levant who were engaged in diplomatic gift giving of semi-precious stones such as lapis, elaborately worked objects of precious materials, gold, ivory, etc., cetera, um, and also of um, transferring princess brides who were sent to Egypt to the Egyptian pharaoh for gold which we learn in the text was as abundant as dirt. In the words of the king of Kassite Babylonia to the Egyptian pharaoh, between kings there is brotherhood, friendship, peace, and good terms, if there are plenty of precious stones, plenty of silver, and plenty of gold. Large clay tablets in the show found at Amarna list the wedding gifts and dowry that accompanied to Egypt the daughter of a 14th century king of Mitanni, a state in the region roughly between modern Kirkuk and Aleppo. And in this museum, we have the burial finery of three Near Eastern wives of Pharaoh Tutmosis III, who lived about 100 years earlier. We're very grateful to Dorothea Arnold and her department for uh, helping us to arrange this innovative display of this material that you see in the show for the first time. Gold vessels, ivory carvings that adorn cosmetic boxes, wooden furniture, and a game box, as you see below, all from various parts of the Mediterranean, provide artistic expressions of this interaction with the creation of new styles combining elements from different cultures and emphasizing certain royal themes, in particular, the domination over uh, wild beasts. This is demonstrated in scenes of hunt and combat, and on one of the greatest works in the show, carved on the lid of an ivory box from the Syrian site of Ugarit, we see a mistress of animals in a mountainous setting nurturing two ibexes, here viewed along with a similar image from the Aegean world. 
Around the time that these objects were produced, a spectacular collection of 36 lapis lazuli cylinder seals traveled to the palace of Thebes in Mycenaean Greece, north of Athens. Among them were grand pieces, such as that of the high official of the Babylonian king, uh, which you see below, many recycled pieces recarved on Cyprus, one above, and some uncarved cylinders found along with floral ornaments of lapis, appropriately sized, perhaps, to repurpose this coveted exotic stone, which, as I said, originated in Afghanistan, to form new jewelry for a member of the Mycenaean Greek court. 